Okay, so we're going to give people a couple minutes here to get into the actual class. While we do that, we're going to try to find a few little things here. So again, welcome everybody. Those who are here, we are actually 98% of the way to class number six, even though we are on, oh yeah, class number five today. Um, I might be looking at that then. Store. So again, we're going to give people a few minutes to hop in to see what's going on with everybody. Do 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 do. Who's this? Oh yeah, that guy. Like we said, we're going to give people a few minutes to get in before we actually start, just to make sure kind of what's going on, see what you guys want to learn. And boop, all right. Hello, Kaizik. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So like I said earlier, we're going to give people a few minutes to kind of hop in, be able to get actually get in to join us. And then we will get started. Pac-Man, Nanyuaseo, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Nikki, welcome. Glad you could make it. Now, I do want to say last week I apologize for not getting on stream with our the number five class because I was actually last week monday i had my second vaccine shot and i was tired all week like i just had no energy whatsoever but this week i am feeling a lot better a lot more energy and i felt like we should probably just get into the fifth class so again i'm going to give everybody like a few more minutes before we actually jump into it so we can kind of get everybody gathered all together Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, so last week, like I said, I had my second Pfizer shot. And I got really lucky because I didn't get like deathly sick, like I've heard a lot of my friends did. But I did get just like zapped of energy. I did not have a lot of energy. And I felt just like really tired every day. So that was the, the issue. Just all of last week, I was just sleepy. But I am back. I am back and I am all good to go. Oh, yeah. 
The second shot Moderna too. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, you don't know what you're talking about. Hey, Jimmy, what, when's, uh, you said Monday it's coming in, right? You, you excited for Monday? You're, uh, you know, you know, we talked about it the other day. Is it Monday or was it Wednesday? It was some that, sometime the, this coming week, right? You know what I'm talking about. It's coming in Saturday. Your uh, your gear, man. When's your gear coming in? For those of you who don't know, Jimmy is a very good musician. He just ordered some new gear, so it's going to be pretty fun. Oh, birdie. Why? Where's the yo? Where's the yo? I will not answer until you add the yo. You got to be formal. Oh, okay. So next week. Okay. Still, that's good. Did you look up a uh, cakewalk? Cause cakewalk is also good. That's what they used to give out with a lot of the, was it the, um, oh, I can't even think of it now with all that kind of stuff. Interfaces. That's what it was. The audio interfaces. Oh, also. I ate. Okay, seems like it's a good time to start. So today we are going to start with I can do it or they can do it, we can do it, which in Korean we have har sui So again, this comes out to like har su i so Yo. Hal su i so yo. Hal su i so yo. So har si so. In general, this is just like I can do it. If you think about the context it's in, like we can ask like har si so. Can you buy it? Ne har si so. Yes, I can do it. Now, if it was to answer like Birdie's question, if you answer then it'd be really bad because it's it's not the same in English as it is in Korean where people can ask like, did you eat? Well, I can eat now. It's not answered in that way. So we do have to think of it a little differently. But can be used in that way. Now, if we add the ru and then sui soil to a verb, that means that we can actually make it so like I can do whatever verb it is. And this actually becomes a very good point because we can actually use like mogul sui soil, which translates to like I can eat it. So that's like ma kur kur ah not two na su i sa yo. Birdie wants to learn about drinking culture. Are you sure? Are you sure, Birdie?
Uh, so that's used when people don't have allergies or something. Mm, well, hold on. Higher suisa, mogor suisa, yeah, is like I can eat. So you can use this if it's like you don't know if it's something they like. Uh, if you're allergic to shellfish, and somebody asks you just like mogor suisa, but you don't know. You could answer mogor suisa like, yes, I can eat it. A lot of times this will be like spicy food, like meun umshik mogor suisa, ne mogor suisa, like, yes, I can eat spicy food. You can use it that way. It can be used for allergy stuff, but a lot of times you don't really know what goes into it. But we can also think of like, and actually gonna add the space which like I can I ah I can see it so again or su e saw yo or su e saw or su e sayo. Like I can see it. And again, if we add it as a question mark at the end, just like Bor Su Sayo, can you see it? Mogor Su Sayo, can you eat it? So we do have the few ways that we can have it. With question mark, can you da da da? Uh, actually I should probably put that up one. There we go. So with I can do it, like we also have the opposite of I can't do it, which is now the only thing that changes is actually the ending. Yes, in this case, Nikki, if I was to say it's implied I can do it. Now, if it's something like if I'm trying to encourage you if we're face to face and I'm looking at you, I can say, Harsi so. Then you think, oh, I can do it. As or I'm saying, you can do it. But in general, if I was to say it right now to everybody, I would have to be very specific, like, Yorobunder, Harsi so. Everybody can do it. So, yes, the I would be implied when we use it in these sentences. Or if there's a question, it's not going to be about me. It's going to ask about the person in front or whoever you're talking to. So yes, it is implied. Arsu up saw you. So I can't do it. Arsu up saw you. Har su opsoyo. Har su opsoyo. So again, har su opsoyo is that I can't do it. Now, if we add the same idea we had before here with the verb ur su and then changes to opsoyo, then we actually come up with the So, har su opsoyo. And then, can't you? Okay. Like we said earlier, mogul su opsoyo, which is, I can't eat it. Mo. Ah, gur su not to su up so yo ma gur su up so yo ma gur su up so yo ma gur su up so yo so ma gur su up so yo is I can't eat it gur su up so yo is I can't see it 
and again, if we add the verb, oh, that got to leave. If we add the verb with the r, and it might actually end up being just like the, this one or the r. Actually, it might even be r. Uh, no, let's take that out for now. Let's just stick with these. Su opso is I can't. Now, if we actually change this to moteo, this one can actually have two different meanings. It can be I can't do it or I won't do it. And again, this one is just that moteyo. 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 So moteyo. And again, a lot of times too, you'll hear all kind of three of these harsui soyo, harsop soyo, moteyo. We will hear all three in daily life, and with a lot of dramas, you'll hear it too. Uh, it's just something that's very common to hear, common to see. <gasps> Spread Lake, thank you for the gifted subs. Oh my god, 10 gifted subs. Thank you so much. Can't hear me. Oh, you're, wait, who's muted? Am I muted? Can you guys hear me? Maybe he's muted. Okay, I was about to say, like, if I've just been sitting here for, what, the past, like, however many minutes just talking to myself, that would be a horrible way to start the stream. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Thank you for that, Jimmy. Okay. So, moteo, again, is I can't do it. Momoru har is again can't do it. Har is I can do it. Good job, Birdie. Okay. So Birdie was saying she would like to know some more about drinking culture in Korea. So for the most part, drinking culture Yes, actually that's perfect Pac-Man. 짬뽕 먹을 수 있어요 is very good. That is grammatically correct. Very good. So you're asking, can you eat 짬뽕? Okay, so drinking culture in Korea. There are a few things like generally they'll say like rule number one, never pour drinks for yourself. Very important. Never pour it for yourself. Number two, when pouring, use two hands, like uh, two hands on the bottle Oh, yeah. Now, if you're drinking alone, that's fine. But generally, you won't go out to the bar or anything drinking alone. You'll just drink at home. So that's up to you. For this, this is generally, if you're going to be out with friends, never pour drinks yourself. Now, you can pour it for somebody else. And again, when pouring, use two hands on the bottle. So like one's on the neck, one's on the bottom of the bottle. The third one is... When receiving a poured drink, hold the glass with two hands or one hand on the glass and one hand on your elbow. And it's, it's just a very like respectful sign.
Oh, yes. So the fourth one is like when doing shots, do not look at the other person or persons. So look away. This one, Nikki Karen's right. You have to turn away. So when they actually give you a shot, you never look at them directly. Like in the States, we're just kind of like, it's that contact. Like you're like, okay, cheers. You look at each other, take the shot. It's good. But in Korea, they don't do it. So Pac-Man, in Korea, they kind of do. If you go to like an American bar, not really, but... When you're like at a restaurant or when you're at like a chicken restaurant and you're pouring drinks for yourself, people kind of give you a bad look because they're like, oh, it's so disrespectful. But for the most part, if they say something, they don't know how to speak to you, so they can't say anything. Always toast. Actually, always toasting is kind of just up to the person. For the most part, toasting is like a very big like university kind of thing where they're always just like to our health oh to our education to this to this and they say it a lot where as you're older they don't really do it as much so again never pour drinks for yourself when pouring use two hands on the bottle when receiving a poor drink hold the glass with two hands or one hand oh i said on hand one ah uh, one hand on the glass and one hand on your elbow when doing shots do not look at the other person look away now there's also other kind of things where you have to be very careful refusing drinks is okay but do not do it on the first ask in general, Koreans will ask you three times. And it's not just for drinking. It's like for eating. Like, are you hungry? Do you want some? No, I'm okay. Are you sure? Do you want some? No, I'm okay. Really, do you want some? Okay, I'll have some. When it comes to drinking and you're getting a drink, you should never say no the first time. The second time is kind of okay, but generally it's like the third time saying no is fine. Like, do you want a drink? No, no, I'm okay. Are you sure? Do you want a drink? No, it's okay. Do you want a drink? I'm getting a drink. No, I'm okay. Okay, done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Comes from joy, trusting each other north and south a long time ago. Did Yep. That's right. Uh, hit glass comes. Yep. So drinking in excess is actually not really looked down on. Yeah. Uh, the Pike, the Pek Chung one, he actually does a really good job of showing more, but it's not kind of the, the current modern drinking culture. He's still got the very old style. Oh, okay. So why it's considered disrespectful to pour your own drink. So the mindset is that you should always be giving to the other person. You know, in Korea, it's like the oldest person is the one who usually buys everything. So you should always be pouring their drinks. You should be giving them that respect because they're purchasing everything for you. Now, if you are drinking alone, of course, it's different. But if you ever participate in the hueshik, which is like the business dinner which isn't really a business dinner it's just dinner and drinks with the co-workers what they tell you is when you accept the drink always use two hands never pour it yourself because if you pour it yourself it's like i'm better than you i don't want you touching my bottle and it's a really big sign of disrespect yeah Pek jong won is very good with food as well he actually made his a lot of his money actually from restaurants and making food for very cheap and very easy recipes. So
So kind of going back to Pac-Man's thing is like over drinking is not looked down upon. Sadly, this is because too many people get drunk. Yep, and serve each other at the table as well. That's right. In general, you never give yourself anything first. You always give it to the other person. And if you're the oldest, the youngest should be preparing it for you. So like if Nikki, Karen, and I went to dinner or lunch anywhere, I would want to make sure that she had her food first, that she was comfortable before I start on my food. You know, I would go grab the water or whatever else we would need. And if she needed something, she would have to ask me and I would go do it. But that would also mean that if we did that, she would have to pay for lunch or dinner. That's just kind of the Korean style. It's not about who invited the other out. It's generally just the older pays for the younger. (laughs) And again, it's all out of that sign of respect. If they don't do it, then, I mean... In all honesty, they're looking for a beatdown. And it won't be in public beatdown, but it would be a beatdown. Exactly. So there are perks to being older. And a lot of my students too, like I have parents who I teach or grandmas that I teach. Anytime they they go out somewhere with me, they always offer to buy the drinks, like the coffee, they buy lunch, they buy whatever. And it's not that they are is trying to flaunt that they have money but it's the fact that that's the culture even if i invited them out somewhere they offer to pay for everything because that's how they feel they should be doing it it's again it is another sign of respect now another thing we got to think about too is not just about the drinking but what do koreans like to drink In general, we've got beer, wine, and soju, which is, again, soju is very common. There's one more, makgeolli. Oh, yeah, that should be right. Makgeolli, yep. So, makgeolli, it's kind of like sake. It's the Korean rice wine. Oh, oh no, Nikki. Okay. So the Korean rice wine, makgeolli, it's very much like sake, but it's still a little different. It's both made from rice, but for the most part, this one is tends to be a little bit more carbonated and they've got a lot of flavors just like uh, sake. But I will say I like the taste of makgeolli more than sake. I think... Uh, Makgeolli is more of like a smooth taste. And honestly, (laughs) we also have it where generally soju is younger people drinking it, younger people's drink. And makgeolli is the older people's drink. Oh, yeah. So in dramas, it actually, they show it just like how you can get it here in the restaurants. When you order makgeolli, usually you get one of like two cups, right? It's never like an actual cup, but it's like the that bronze looking, almost like a, uh, uh, like a, a saucepan that you pour it into and you drink it. Or they got kind of like the gourd bottom and you just drink from that. Like it's, a, it's an experience, but it's actually really good. And... They, what was it? They don't eat. Oh, that's actually a pretty good question too, Nikki. Uh, they don't eat food and drink at the same time. So something like in the States, if we're drinking, we're going to be like eating chicken wings or something like always together. If people are going out just to drink, in general, they don't eat any food. And it's very strange. Now, they do eat what's called anju, which is like drinking snacks. 
uh, not stacks, snacks. And this is generally like that, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of like the saucers. So the drinking snacks are more like dried squid or uh, like a dried fish, maybe some peanuts, like just basic things, but they don't eat a lot. Now, soju, and actually let's start with beer. If you look at the basic Korean beer, you've got, uh, ooh, Kaizik, thank you for the 100 bits. Yeah, so kind of like bar snacks. Uh, when you come to the beer, in general, if you buy it at like the convenience stores, we can get four cans, which uh, it's like the four tall boy cans for about Manwan, which is about 10,000 won. Yeah. Oh, uh, my one button doesn't work. Well, 10,001. And that's about, I want to say like $8 for four tall boy cans of beer. Wine in general is always more expensive. It's the same, I would say, similar price to wine in the USA. Soju, now here's where it gets interesting. Soju is about 1,000, I think it's like 1,500 won, which is about, actually, it's about $1. $1 USD for one bottle. Makali, it's about, I want to say, like uh, 2,800 won. One which is about like $2.20. And again, this is kind of a big bottle. It's cheap. So again, you're looking at about $2 per can for big boys, uh, the tall boys. But again, you've got the main Korean beers, which don't taste that good. And then you've got like the better, like personally, I like Makali, so I really like drinking that, but uh, Anju is kind of where a lot of restaurants make their money. <laughs> okay, music scene and music related stuff. Got you, Jimmy. So, for the most part, here too, there's a lot of things like when you go eat sangipsar, which is like the pork belly, or you go to just like any restaurants that sell meat or chicken, generally, beer and soju is what's most common. You can find some of like the jeon, which is like a Korean pancake, which has like the different meats or different uh, seafood. There's different things they put in that are more makgeolli and soju. You also have what we call somak, which is actually just like somak. Oh, wow, not back. Somak. This is a mix of soju and beer this also can be very dangerous because depending how lightly or how much soju they put into the beer you can get drunk real quick okay any other questions about drinking culture before we go on <laughs> hey, honestly, like it's kind of sad. Like in the US, I think soju for one bottle goes for like eight to ten bucks or even more. Makali, I think it's probably about the same, maybe more, but it might be harder to find. But again, if you go to like H Mart, like uh Nikki, I think you said you went today. H Mart is a very great place to go find it. And again, you actually got some pretty good stuff from what I saw. Like the keran mari, you can actually make at home, but it's good. The tanmuji, if I, I want to say it's kind of hard. Like if your husband ate all the pickled radish, like that's kind of a lot to eat in one sitting. But if it's like over a few times, that's great. The hot duck you got, 
actually, I I want to say it's not the original hotdog. It actually just looks more like regular dog. It's just a chapsar dog. Hotdog is actually more like a deep fried outside, almost, and then a yeah, deep fried outside with the honey and was it like the sesame seed? No, uh, honey and sunflower seed on the inside. But like the kotori, oh, you got the really good kimchi. I like the kotori. It's more of like a fresh kimchi. That's a very good one. And again, the keranmari is something you can actually make at home fairly well. And it's not really a Korean omelet. It's more like a Korean egg roll because it's literally they roll the egg into the shape to actually make it. But there's a lot of good stuff there. Yeah, yeah. From what I've seen, you got more just the regular thok. And it's kind of the one with like the, the powder on the outside as well, which is still good. You can get that sweetness on the inside. And it's very juicy. <laughs> okay, so for the music scene, oh, let's see. Oh, okay. So, Pac Man, when you were talking about rap, so Korean sea rap, it's not really exotic American thing because, again, hip hop has been in Korea for uh, since like the 90s for the most part. And their hip hop and rap scene has changed a lot, but it's not the same as the US. The US rap scene is definitely a lot more grown, more developed. Where in Korea, a lot of the rap artists try to emulate what they see in US music videos and stuff, but they're having a harder time because they can't talk about drugs or talk about like sleeping with so many women and all this other stuff because it's not, doesn't match the culture here. If they were to do that, they would probably get shut down real quick. But rap is still something that a lot of them find very interesting. So they want to do it and they want to see people do it. So in the most part, if you're looking for the music scene, we've got Hongik University Station. Yeah, uh, University Station. And this is the Hongdae Ipgu. Uh, yeah, Hongdae Ipgu. This is the place to be if you want to see like street performers. Street performers. Uh, there's many buskers, dancers, just art in general. Because Hongdae University or Hongik University is the art school. In that area, that's where most of the people go. And especially younger people, like people in their 20s or such, that they go, they perform, and it's live performances, acoustic performances, there's dance, there's a lot of stuff like that. Dok and fruit mentioned for breakfast. Uh, I mean, really, dok isn't really a breakfast food. It's more just like a snack. Even fruit, it's not really that common for breakfast. Like it's again, it's more of like a snack here. Again, if you're looking for Korean style breakfast, it's literally the same as lunch and dinner. It's a bowl of rice, side of kimchi, maybe like one meat, and then like a, a few other vegetables, and then a soup. That's basic lunch or basic breakfast. Uh, is this why there is almost always a rapper in boy bands, even if it doesn't really? Yes. They kind of think that if there's a rapper, it brings more skill or talent, and it's more of a marketing tool for the Western cultures. But for the most part, it doesn't really match everything else. So where would one go to find metal? Now, if you're looking for alternative music, you do have music bars and even like live music bars you've got vinyl bars and these places are a lot better if you're trying to find more other stuff you can find a lot of like indie music from the live music bars because they actually hire out talents so like they hire musicians to come and play and i've had friends who did this they actually were on call to many different bars to come and play now 
this stuff is usually if you want like just like rock music it's going to be itaewon which sadly it's dying down more but for live music it's still one of the better places to go there are a few bars out there that actually play Ooh, okay. So for the most part, if you're looking for music to start like pits, you're only going to be able to find them at the music festivals. Now they do have like hard rock music festivals come every year. I think the, like the last big one, they, I think they had like green day. They also had a um, Lincoln park. They had a few other like really big name bands come, but it's something that if people listen to, they're very quiet about listening to it. Uh, let's see. Music bars let you request music to play. Vinyl bars is pay enough money and give a list of songs to the worker and they'll play it from there. Now, I would say too, Jimmy, if you're looking for like hard rock stuff, you might have to see about some of the Korean universities. A lot of the universities, they have their own festivals that happen where they have actual like talent contests. They've got people actually coming out to do everything so they can do all that there. But generally those aren't open to the public. Like, uh, for I think a good example is a few years ago, there there's a, a cherry blossom festival in the springtime. My wife and I went, and there was the these young guys who were doing like rap music, like super hard, like American rap, where they were like, you know, fuck this, fuck that, like I'm gonna do this, and it was a place filled with just families walking around exploring and enjoying the cherry blossoms but you just have these teenagers coming up there singing the song on the stage and i just looked at my wife and i told her i was like i cannot believe they're letting these people play that kind of music right now like in the middle of the day with all these families like if they knew what was being said they'd be having a hard time about it and again it's just surprising Let's see. Anybody else have any other questions about the music scene? Or, uh, you know, drinking culture, any other questions? Yeah, I think, honestly, Jimmy, if you're looking for this for metal, Japan might be better. Otherwise, Korea, you're going to have to be very specific in, like, trying to find, like, specific concerts and other things like that where... It's going to take more time to do. I've actually, I've played some music stuff. I've actually, I have have done it. I have performed here in Korea for, with a group of friends. It started off as my one friend's going away party. The, they were like, oh, you know, we're going to play some live music. We don't have a drummer. Hey, David, you play music. You play drums. Why don't you join us? I was like, okay, cool. I did that and then they invited me to come play like a St. Patrick's Day event with them. And I schedule didn't work up because I had to do classes, but I have played quite a few music out here. Like I've I've done the acoustic live play at a bar with a friend who I I mean I played guitar and uh sang with that. It's very common, it's very possible. You just have to know the when and where. Ah. No, I, I'm not an idol, but I mean, again, in Korea, there's more opportunities, but you just have to know when and where to look.
So for the most part, yes. Street musicians can set up and play anywhere, but generally you do have to think about the main areas. Like you don't want to set up right next to a subway station because most likely police will come by and be like, hey, you're bothering people or they can't walk by. You got to move. If you go to the Hongdae area, as long as you set up, I believe you can just set up and play. I don't think they actually have any like sign up sheets or anything like that because nobody stays in one spot for a long time. Everybody just kind of rotates around. When do you think foreigners will be welcome back in Korea? Now, that's a good question. Right now, foreigners are actually welcome back, but I believe it's like a temporary seven-day, uh, was it quarantine, I believe, because you could have your vaccine papers or your vaccine stuff translated into Korean, have the, uh, was it the PCR test as negative or, translated in korean as well so when you come here they really just send you on your way they don't care but there are no there currently are no uh airport buses working so you'd have to either take a taxi or have somebody drive out to the airport to bring you where you need to go but it is starting to open up again again it's just making sure you have the right papers making sure you have everything set and going what music genres would you say are the most prevalent ones, like the top five? Okay. A lot of people still like the Korean hip-hop. Korean pop, again, is always very popular. Uh, surprisingly, like, indie music is not that big. Their rock music is big, but Korean rock is kind of like Nickelback, so it's not good rock. Uh, and then... Again, you almost have like the Korean style, like parody music as well, which is pretty big. The two is biggest ones I can think of are UV and Norajo, which they just make funny music and it's pretty much parody on everything else. So yeah, that's what I would say. Um, depending on the time of year as well, like with it coming Christmas soon, they're definitely going to be playing a lot more like Let It Go, Into the Unknown, like the Disney Frozen soundtrack. And it's it's not good, especially because you'll hear like little boys literally running out to the street like, Into the Unknown! And like they're like screaming it out loud and it, uh, they're so bad. OSTs are also very popular, but it's more like at home people will listen to it. They won't go out to like a bar or a club to listen to OST. So in Korea, they don't have any like specific thing. Like, yeah, in Japan, they go KFC. In Korea, honestly, they don't really do anything special. Like they give gifts, but they don't really like decorate trees. They don't... Uh, set up lights or anything like that outside it's very quiet but some places do play christmas music and again it's like korean versions of the american uh, christmas music so in korea for christmas they don't eat anything special they, again there's not really anything special Any other questions, you guys? How much are guitars priced? Honestly, Jimmy, they're a lot more expensive here. You can get the cheap brand stuff for fairly cheap. Uh, Craigslist is also a very good spot to search, but again, people will... Let me see if I can find one here real quick, too. People will sell 
bad guitars for really expensive prices. Like, let's see. Uh, this one's not that bad. Like they got a 2020 Gibson Les Paul special tribute for about 700 bucks. But when you meet them, they're going to be like, no, no, it's actually like $7,000. Um, Music Man Silhouette Bass. This stuff too. Music Man's a very, oh, no, this is electric guitar. Ooh. This is also very high-end guitar. They're selling it for about 1.4 thousand uh, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. One thousand four hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, Gibson Epiphone Classic, three hundred bucks. You know they've got uh, some like ninety one Gibson Explorer, like the lightning bolt shape one, is a uh, about a thousand five hundred bucks. Some of them is just ridiculously priced. It's not worth the value. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Is Halloween celebrated in only the English academies, the schools, and then in Itaewon, Halloween is celebrated people in general. It's not like Japan. Japan has a great Halloween culture in Korea. The children all want it, but the parents don't know what it is. So there is no Halloween culture really. When are we going to see you on guitar virtually? Of course, if you guys want to, let me know. I will try to plan something for that. Because it's not like it's impossible. I can do it. Uh, I have played ukulele on stream a few times. So that's also a thing. But yeah, Jimmy, I would say if you're going to buy a guitar and like bring it to Korea, it's easier to bring one than it is to buy one here. So, you know, for Halloween, especially here, I get to save a lot of money on candy. But November 11th is Pepero Day. So that's the day like when everybody buys and gives Pepero, which is like the Korean version of Paki. So that's a, another big thing. Set it up. I will. Okay. I will see what I can do, Nikki. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I guess if there's no more questions, I might think that uh, that's the end for today. But if you guys have anything else you guys want to learn, oh, what other instruments do I play? That's a very good question, Andicap. So I've got, I play guitar, I play ukulele, bass guitar. I can play a little bit of like piano, keyboard. I play drums. Uh, I can play kazoo. I. I mean, I want to buy an with the automaton, which is like a a Pac-Man looking instrument. Kitakakaju <laughs> say, yeah, Pac-Man. That's right. If you're asking for a discount, that's right. Um, for the most part, I mean, I make my own music, so I kind of learn everything I can, and that's pretty much what I do. So I can play a lot of instruments. Yeah, they're so cute. Like, I really want to get one because it looked like it'd be so fun to learn to play. I really am a one-man band. Yes, that is correct. Oh, you did? Oh. and I mean, they've got a lot, but they look like they're fun.
So Jimmy, wait, what, what am I waiting for, Jimmy? But yeah, long arm relationship, I think having one is just fun. I think it's cool. I used to also play harmonica, but I, I learned so much about the different types of harmonica and stuff like that. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Medium sized one is probably what I would look at. I don't want to get like the large one because I want to make sure I know how to play it and how to use it first. But yeah, nursery rhymes definitely sounds like the first task. Yeah. I mean, I surprised a lot of my students. Like I used to bring my ukulele or even guitar to classes sometimes just because it's like little kids. If we're doing nursery rhymes, like I'll just play the song, sing it with them. And that was fun. Some kids, I'll actually like a majority of the kids have pianos and I always ask them, can they make music? Oh, how many biddies for me to do a full music stream playing and stuff that I have no idea, Jimmy. Although I think if we did that, I'd have to think what I can do. Because again, I don't have a drum set with me. I got a kazoo, ukulele, and guitar. I also have a MIDI keyboard, which I could probably like try to make a song on stream. I just don't know how much, how many biddies I'd have to do for that. I have no idea. I feel like that's something uh, I, I should be asking you. How many... How many biddies do you need to do a full music stream and playing and stuff? Yeah, just like the the fretboard or something. <laughs> hey, well, 50 bucks to write a song. I mean, a song's a song, right? But are you going to do it on stream or are you going to do it like by yourself and then post it later? That's the question. Actually, you know what, Jimmy? I think you and I might have to do it this way where... Uh, our friend Crafty, Crafty Tanuki, he's actually asked us, actually, he asked me, and I think Jimmy's going to be involved anyways, to make him a uh, kind of a theme song. So if we do this live music stream, we might have to try to make Crafty's theme song live and just have uh, chat help us. I think that'd be, that'd be fun. Again, I don't think I'm like a, a music genius or anything, but I can definitely come up with something simple. Yeah, he asked me too. So I think that'd be fun if we did that. Uh, but again, I, I don't know when but we'll try to make something happen i think we'll do that one without biddies we'll just go into it and then we'll see how it turns out oh okay so the difference between can can't do and can can't do well okay so that kind of goes back into here, like can do, we could kind of think back to harsiso. And again, that's the basic can. Harsopso, I can't do it. This is the basic can't do. Now, if you want to say can or can't do well. So I can do well, do it well. This would be like tar. And again, that's the I can do it well. So again, that's like the tar 
두 있어요. 잘할수 있어요. 잘할수 있어요. 잘할수 있어요. Now, if we want to say I can't do it well, now 잘할수 없어 doesn't really work. We actually end up using the 못해요. So this is where we'd say like 잘 못해요. And again, we just add that 잘 못해요. 잘 못해요. Oh, wait, not moth. 잘 못해요. So 잘 못해요 is I can't do it well. Let me write this in here too. So 잘 못해요 and 잘할수 있어요 is the difference between can do well, can't do well. So again, can, can't do, the biggest thing is the 할수 있어요 is to be able to do it. 할수 없어요, can't do it. And again, when we look at the 잘할수 있어요, it's I can do it well. And then 잘 못해요, I can't do it well. So did that kind of clear things up for you, Long Arm Legend? So chokum is more uh, like a little bit. So if we were to add chokum, it actually wouldn't really work. Like chokum harsi so is like I can do a little, but it doesn't really match well with it. Instead, we'd have to just say like chokum an harkeo. Like I will just do a little bit. Uh, let's uh Guman Because Chokum is usually like a little. So if we say Chokuman Hakkyo, it's just I will do a little. But Nikki, I see you're getting better at writing in Korean. That's really great to see. I'm glad. I was very surprised and very happy when you wrote that in the uh, the introduction part of the Discord channel as well. I was very happy to see that. I'm glad that you know you're actually growing more. It's good to see. Well, are there any other questions then? So you're very close, Long Arm Legend. You actually would say like, 조금만 먹을까요? Well. So again, that's 조금만 먹을까요? And again, this is like, I will eat a little. 조금만 and Mo Gayo.
something you can say like uh, yeah so yeah 조금만 먹을까요 is I'll eat a little that's right so Kai say okay do you think we could have had a class about abrupt and non-abrupt batim? Uh, it's kind of hard because a lot of times too it just depends on the situation so it is very situational at the same time it's like the adding the ja at the end like 우리 밥 먹자 우리 가자 and a lot of times it's still seen as just bad oh I'm sorry uh, bad team is different uh See, it's getting to that point where it's late for me, but I'm I'm trying to remember. Okay, Pachim. So, for the most part, I want to say I don't really know how to tell you the differences or like how to tell when to use each one. For the most part, when it comes to the the Pachim, it's just learning from experience. Like I'm sure there's a grammatical reason for it, but when you actually get to speaking and using it in daily life. You just kind of pick up on it, and you just know it as it comes, but you don't really know why it comes out that way. If that makes sense, like uh, it's kind of like English grammar. Like nobody really knows all the English grammar points, but we just know if it's right or wrong. And when it comes to like patim in Korean, it's very similar. <laughs> Pac-Man, I'm getting to that point. I feel like I should. Yeah. I, and again, Kaisik, like I said, I, I wish I could give you more of like a, a great point, but honestly, like I can't tell you exactly because I don't know the exact rules. I just, when I hear it, when I, when I see it, when I read it, I kind of know. I thank you for that, Nikki. So listening to your podcast helps a lot. Listening helps in all these. Yeah. Listening helps in every situation. It's very good. And again, like tips just for like getting more practice is Listen as much as you can, speak as much as you can, do it as much as you can. I would say try not to get into the grammar too much because, again, once you have a, a basic understanding, then going into grammar, it makes a lot more sense. If you are trying to just get into it, it's hard. I think watching with Korean subs on, yeah, watching with Korean subs on does help for visualizing how to pronounce the words. Make more episodes, and I will try to get back into it. I will say this year I have been kind of lazy with the podcast and I apologize for that. I do kind of want to make a better organized version of it so that at least it's more cohesive instead of kind of jumping around. But I will try to get more into that. I want to say by November, I will try to have more episodes out for sure. Yeah, it starts to become more intuitive. That's right. And again, if there's ever anything else you guys want to learn or you guys want to see, let me know in the Discord as well because that helps me to kind of see what you guys want to learn, what I should try to teach more next, and we can go from there. That's definitely helpful to me. So best tips studying using K-drama. Sadly, the only one I can give you that's the one I used is you have to watch the drama literally each episode three times. Once with English subs, so you know what's going on. Second, with Korean subs, so you can start picking out the different expressions, different vocabulary, and the pronunciation. And the third is straight up listening practice. Now, I will say too, if you don't do it with the subs, so you don't know what they're saying, it's really hard, but shadowing really helps. That way you can try to work on getting rid of your 
pronunciation issues because a lot of Americans, like we actually kind of make our own pronunciation problem. So it doesn't sound very natural where if you learn and shadow it perfectly, you actually feel more natural and people get very surprised. Yeah, best to find one you really like. I've mentioned in podcasts before, and I think I've mentioned it to people in general before. One that I used a lot was the Kotpoda Namja, the Boys Before Flowers. I think I've seen every episode like five to six, maybe 10 times each. And eventually I would just play in the background and just work on listening and shadowing. After that, when I came to Korea, I started talking to people. Everybody was just like, you know, you speak like a natural Korean. You don't have the accent. Like you sound like somebody from Seoul. The notes, I would say notes is fine. But again, it's like listening practice, most important, shadowing what they're saying. So when they say something, pause, copy it and say it. And again, like I said, the first time you're watching it just to get the story. So you're not as focused or in into the story the second time you watch it. The second time with the Korean subs, that is where you're going to stop, read the sub, write down the sub, whatever you have questions about, find it online or ask somebody who knows and learn the Korean that way because that's the more natural way. The third time, again, it's that shadowing and it's the listening because the better your listening gets, the easier it will be to actually start speaking and remembering, but you do have to remember that. <laughs> now, I will say that's something too. If you watch more of the historical dramas, it's probably not best to learn Korean from there because you'll learn a lot of the strange Korean uh, and the more like old style. So when you come to Korea and you meet people, they're going to be like, who is this person? Like, why? Like, like, and it's like people don't speak that way these days. Uh, you just have to be careful what you learn from. Like you can learn some of the history points and like that's a good, but they're going to be more worried about how you speak to them. So it'd be better to try to find a more modern one if you're going to learn that way. Like don't watch Kingdom and expect to learn how to speak Korean well, but Squid Game works. Exactly. Like learning English from Shakespeare. Which again, if nobody see if you haven't seen Squid Game yet, it's a very good watch. I would really suggest watching it. It is the modern style Korean language as well. So you will learn a lot. And you do hear the different dialects, but it's good. Exactly. Dost thou knoweth how to learn Korean? So, if there's no other question, uh, but yeah, if there's no other questions, then I'm gonna go ahead and post this uh, po the not podcast the PowerPoint in the Discord. So anybody who's interested, you can go ahead and download it from there as well. If you want me to send it to you through Discord, let me know as well. I will try to make sure you get it. Uh, and if you haven't already, this is the Discord 
you should be able to click the link, join, and everybody can kind of see. Okay, go, good job, Nikki Karen. Very good. And yeah, next week we'll be back with Korean class number six. And again, thank you guys for everything. And again, whatever you guys want to learn, let me know in, in the, the Discord as well. And I will try to make sure that we get something ready and prepared for that. Now you can join. Now you can join what, Jimmy? <gasps> ah, JC. JC, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Okay, Pac Man says, wait. I thought you were already in my Discord. Yeah, I think JC did change her name because before she was JC Sunflower and now she's JC Bliss. It should be JC Beanpole. I think she'd like that name. <laughs> Or she'll kill me for that. I don't know. Anyways, again, thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> You know I'm just joking with you, JC. Uh, but we, we're going to go stream a, a friend of mine. Or we're going to go raid him, I should say. Uh, his name's Spread Lake. He's a pretty cool guy. No, I never said that, Jimmy. I thought I, I thought you were already in. Hold on, wait a minute. Uh, the, 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 oh, Jimmy was never in my Discord. Oh, Jimmy. Uh, we're going to go raid a friend of mine. He's currently playing Dead by Daylight. He's a cool guy that we actually met from him raiding me. It was pretty fun. Uh, but we're going to go raid him. If you guys enjoy it, uh, stay watching. If not, I mean, it's cool. And we will see you guys next Saturday, same time, same place, for another Korean lesson. So thank you, guys. 다음에 봐요.